Australia, home of the possum, cool surfer dudes, strange lingo, now nah, worries mate, fair dinkum, lots of sunshine and the Bonza Barrier Reef. It's the biggest, most spectacular coral reef in the world and what's more, every creature is linked to another. Just imagine one huge family tree dating back 18 million years. From the minuscule to the mammoth to the miraculous, they're all connected in Barney's Barrier Reef. Roll up, roll up, get your special island coconuts. Special coconuts right here. One for ten, two for twenty-five. Don't be disappointed. Miss these and you miss out. Oh, what's so special about these? Ah, oh, well, these are island coconuts. And? Uh, and there's only six of these in existence at the moment. And you won't find any of these anywhere else for about ten metres. Well, they just look like normal coconuts to me. Oh, well, that's where you're wrong, miss. You see, these are specially designed. Well, a coconut is a coconut and... That one's empty. Ah, uh, yes, but Barney, that is... you'd make a rubbish con man. Ah, <laughs> uh, how'd you know it was me? Luckily, the shady creatures of the underwater world are much smarter con men and better masters at disguise. I tell you what, you can have it for 20. <laughs> Time to take a look at the tricks of the trade of the real Barrier Reef con men. <laughs> So, for our first creature con man, um, I think we've encountered a breathing rock. Yeah, that may or may not be an eye. And those may or may not be, um, teeth. You were right the first time. And so were you. We're looking at a stonefish, a master of disguise, a true monster of the deep. And he is ugly. He's a right fidget, he can't get comfortable. And he really needs to be comfortable because he may be there for a while. He's a true professional undercover con man, this one. Nice day for it, eh? That's it. Meet one of the ocean's most convincing tricksters. He has all the tools to disguise himself and stake out any passing prey. Hey! He has thick skin covered in slimy algae to resemble a stone. Eyes that can constantly look all around them, his very own binoculars. Upturned mouth facing the surface, all the better to sculpt you with. Add that all up and you get an easy meal for this geezer. What? You wouldn't want to meet one of these con men in a dark alley. They're so well disguised. There are no warning signs and you can be history in about 15 milliseconds. Huh? Their skin just keeps growing and growing and growing to become really thick-skinned. Hey, stupid stinky stonefish, you are ugly and your breath stinks. Hey, that's a bit mean. I'm just seeing how thick-skinned he is. Oh, not that kind of thick-skinned. <laughs> the stonefish is the ultimate master of disguise, blending into the background and lying in wait for poor innocent fish. Who's our next trickster? <laughs> Um, why are we looking at two leaves, Jem? We're not. Uh, one leaf, two leaf. Yes, we are. Nope. One of them is faking it. <laughs> oh, is that fish feeling OK? Come on, mate. Swim properly. <laughs> You're rubbish. Hey! Don't insult our fish, even if they are con men. It's all part of his act. He doesn't just look like a leaf, he behaves like one too. Oh, wow, that sounds like so much fun. Not. <laughs> It's not about fun. This is a baby batfish, and pretending to be a leaf is a cunning way of escaping from the jaws of potential predators. Oh, well, he deserves an Oscar, then. Oh, that's an extremely convincing performance. Oh, very moving, sweetie. But couldn't he have chosen something more exciting to impersonate? Not if he wants to survive. No fish is going to want to nibble on a dry old leaf, so he gets left alone until he grows up and heads for the big reef. <laughs> And when he's an adult, he swims like a proper fish. And when he's grown up, there's nothing leafy about him at all. He happily munches on jellyfish. So the stonefish pretends to be a dreary old stone and the batfish a limp, lifeless leaf. Yep, so they're connected because they're both fakers. <laughs> 
Hello, long stripy snake. You've got the whole ocean to yourself there by the looks of it. Yeah. Oh, and here's another one. Um, he's not a snake, Gem. He's a snake eel. Don't be ridiculous, Barney. He's either a snake or an eel. They're two separate animals. I mean, they may look alike, but they're still different. It's like calling something a rabbit hare, a frog toad or zebra horse, just because they look similar. It may be ludicrous, but it's true, and for a very cunning reason. Meet the deadly banded sea snake. Hello, banded sea snake. You look familiar. And here is the snake eel. Ah, uh, confusion overload. OK, well, let's have a look at the CV, shall we? The sea snake. Appearance, stripy. A reptile, not a fish. Specialist skills, swims well, scarily venomous. The snake eel. Appearance, stripy. A fish, not a reptile. Specialist skills, swims well, and pretty harmless, unless you're a fishy. Ah, so the snake eel looks like the snake, swims like the snake, but is a fish, not a reptile, and is not venomous. Um, why? Well, it's a complete con. By copying the way the sea snake looks, the snake eel is much less likely to get attacked. Which is why he is so confidently swimming through the reef without a care in the world. So the leaf-loving batfish and the fake snake eel are connected because they're both complete fakers. Bring on the next con man, please. <laughs> so our sneaky snake eel is not the only shifty mimic in the reef. Wait until you see these two amazing lookalikes. Let me introduce you to the black-saddled Toby fish. He's part of the pufferfish family. Oh, he's a cutie. He's a toxic cutie, as it happens. He has poisonous skin, and his yellow, black and white colourings tell passing predators that he tastes horrible. Well, this is all very interesting, Barney, but really, he's not a con man, is he? Patience, Gemma, patience. Let me introduce another fish altogether. The Mimic Leather Jacket. Hey! <laughs> Hang on. Let me see that again. Hey! <laughs> It's like, spot the difference. They're exactly the same. Yeah, pretty much. You see, the Toby fish is not exactly an Olympic swimmer, so he has toxic skin and bright bee-like colouring instead. So it means he can happily swim along, knowing he won't get gobbled up because his bright colour screams, I'm toxic, stay away! Oops! Yep, the leather jacket doesn't have poisonous skin, so it mimics the toxic Toby fish to the last little black dot. Ah, so he looks poisonous when actually he's as harmless as a fly. <laughs> That's well crafty. <laughs> the snake eel and leather jacket are connected because they are both toxic copycats. <laughs> Hello, it's the Fang Blenny fish. Um, are they Scottish? Uh, no, I just thought that Fang Blenny sounds like a Scottish name. It's actually called Fang Blenny because it's got big fangs, and Blenny comes from the Greek for mucus because it has really slimy skin. Ooh, but is he a slimy character? Oh, yes. It's slime for me to explain. No. I hope that's as bad as it gets. Uh, please continue. Sorry. So, this is the Fang Blenny in his normal outfit, a nice shade of orange. <laughs> and this is the Cleaner Rass, one of the reef's most popular fish. The Cleaner Rass are reef heroes because they nibble and clean up nasty parasites from other fishes' bodies. Ew, not my idea of a good meal, but, you know, each to their own. And the Fang Blenny feeds on scales and chunks of fish flesh. Hey! What? As fresh as it gets, actually. <laughs> straight off a fish's body. Ew! <laughs> so the crafty Fang Blenny already swims quite like the Rass, but when he decides he wants a piece of the parasite action, he pairs up with a cleaner Rass and changes his outfit to look like him. They're exactly the same. <gasps> ah, so he tries to fool the fish into thinking they're going for a nice fish wash with the cleaner Rass, but instead, they're going to get their flesh nibbled by a fishy con man. Ooh! Hey! <laughs> Both the Mimic Leather Jacket and Crafty Fang Blenny steal other fishes' IDs for an easier life. These two cheeky con men are connected by cunning cases of stolen identity. <laughs> These cute fish are looking right at you. 
Meet the twin spot gobies. They have, well, twin spots. Which is their front end and which is their back end? Aha, uh -huh. well, that's their con. Their two-spotted fin is confusing to our eyes and even more confusing to the underwater world. In fact, they're also named the crab-eye goby because they pretend to be a crab to fool predators. Oops. Let's take a closer look. Ah, that's their real eye. Oh, or is that their eye? Ah, oh, they're very clever, these little gobies. Um, can I help you? Uh, what are you looking at? Uh, do you mind? Oh, very yummy sand. Hmm. They're bottom feeders, so spend most of their time munching on sand to filter through any nibbles. They're also behaving like twins. I mean, look at them moving completely in sync. Yeah, brace yourself. Romantic moment coming. They're in love. You're kidding. Nope, gobies mate for life and are completely faithful to each other, which may explain why they're so in sync. What's the connection between this slushy pair and the feisty fang blenny? They are both crafty in pairs. The fang blenny is only inspired when a cleaner wrasse is around and the gobies only have eyes for each other. Right, let's take a look back at our crazy conmen connections. So, how do we get from that way too convincing fish dressed as a stone and end up with these odd goby twosome? Let's reef cap. He may not be the best looking con man you'll ever meet, but he's certainly one of the most effective. The big gulping stonefish. From one extreme to the other, our delicate little batfish cons his way out of trouble by pretending to be a leaf. <laughs> Bizarre, but not as bizarre as this ocean scam. An eel pretending to be a snake. It gets him a much better deal in the ocean, though, just like our friend the leather jackets. Aye! <laughs> pretending to be the toxic toby fish, so much so you can hardly tell the difference between them. It's a bit like stealing someone's ID. And their clothes. <laughs> and their face. <laughs> just like the crafty fang blenny, riding on the reputation of the popular cleaner wrasse. The little gobies aren't scary at all, but their false eyes are freaky. Here's looking at you from uh, my side. So, who's our next shady sea dealer? <laughs> this is the peculiar little pufferfish. Yeah. With its silly helicopter fins and weird box-shaped head, some are pretty, some are spotty, or have a fondness for leopard skin, and some even resemble other animals. <laughs> so on first glance, quite cute and cuddly, really. But this is a show about con men of the reef. Oh no! And this darling little puffer is one of the world's most poisonous fish. They have a deadly toxin inside, so anything that tries to eat them gets poisoned and their skin is often covered in spikes, so either way, they're not first on any predator's menu. Ah, that explains why they're so out and proud. In fact, puffer fish aren't content with just being toxic and spiky. They have another con trick to beat all cons. It's not subtle, but boy, is it effective. Ah, oh, I'm a little puffer fish just minding my own business. I look so sweet and innocent, don't I? Now, leave me alone. No, I mean it. Really, go away, cos you won't like me when I'm angry. Seriously, you won't? Like me when I'm angry? Oh, see what you've made me do? I warned you, didn't I? I am now a big spiky ball in a bad mood. With their sensational water-sucking action, they transform from this to this. So by increasing their size by more than three times into this ludicrous spiky ball, they con their enemies into thinking they're much bigger than they actually are. And let's face it, who wants to attempt to eat a big spiky poisonous ball? I would say, um, no one. Cool con. Imagine if we could do that. Uh, you just don't look as scary though. Our peculiar puffer fish can transform into a spiky beach ball and the twin spot goby make themselves look like giant crabs. So they are connected because their size lies. <laughs> well, there must be some tasty fish food here. It's a bit of a fish fight. Meet the catfish. Catfish, are you sure? I can't see the resemblance. Well, from a distance, they look like quite ordinary fish, but there's something rather whiskery going on in the mouth area. 
Fish with whiskers. Well, they're actually called barbels. They're basically sand stirrers for the catfish to rummage around on the seafloor for tasty morsels. Well, why do they all need to rummage in the same bit of sand? It's a device to make themselves look too big to bother with. You mean their predators see them as one big animal and think, no way, too much hassle. <coughs> yep. With up to 100 fish in one gang at a time, they use their numbers to appear more threatening to their enemies. Who wants to bother battling a hundred catfish when they could snaffle up a single fish here and there? And I guess not every fish has the ability to blow themselves up like Mr. Pufferfish. So they have to use other ways to con and confuse their enemies. Like the pufferfish, the crafty catfish use size trickery to fool their enemies by ganging together to form one big feeding ball. So who's our next crafty con man? <laughs> Does my hair look all right? I just can't get it right. I don't know, but I'm itching to stick this bit of algae on. Now, how do I look? Um, a little too green, I'd say. Yeah, I think I just need a little bit of white scraggy stuff here, a white ball of random fluff here. Just give it a clean first, health and safety. Oh, I love dressing up. <clears throat> oh, baby. I reckon these crabs have got a little carried away with the ocean dressing up box. Hello. These crabs are called decor. Oh, sorry. These crabs are called decorator crabs, and the name says it all. They spend most of their time decorating themselves in bits and pieces of the reef for disguise. That's so cool. Whether they prefer the pebble dash look, the more traditional leafy green attire, these stone-like accessories, or the mad purple hair, whatever they pick allows them to skulk around unnoticed by their enemies. So they're basically playing dressing up to disguise themselves with outfits that mean they can completely blend in. Watch it. Yeah, clever, eh? I wish we could do that. Think we'd look even weirder? Hmm. Plus, we're not covered in ah. tiny hooks that we can attach this stuff to, like the decorator crab. Which reminds me, why did the crab cross the road? I don't know. To get to the other tide. <laughs> to get to the other like, side, but tide. It's a crab. Awesome. All right, try this one. Try this one. This one's free. What's a crab's favourite movie? I don't know. Claws. <laughs> it's like Jaws, but it's a crab. It's claws. Get off me. That was so unnecessary. Like the catfish who uses his mates to blend in with the other big fish, the crab uses bits and pieces from around his home to blend in with his environment. The catfish and decorator crab are the ultimate use more to blend in ocean con men. <laughs> OK, Barney. What? I'll give you a hundred coconuts if you can spot our next con man. You have five seconds starting now. OK, over there. They're on the right. Over. The no, no, they're on the top left. Hang on a minute. No, they're in the middle. Just by... Oh, no, it's not there. Oh, man! Ha-ha! <laughs> My coconuts are safe. Here he is. That's just a piece of coral. Whoa, hang on, the coral moved. Well, we've seen an eel that looks like a snake, a leaf impersonator, and a crab that dresses up. Hello? But in my book, nothing beats this little fella, the pygmy seahorse. But how is it... Why... why what, is it computer-generated or something? I mean, they've got very stilted moves, haven't they? Oh, I want to go there. Oh, look, I've made it. Oh, oh, oh. Just an amazing example of how nothing in the ocean is as it first appears. These little fellas are seahorses, but so titchy-tiny it's untrue. The size of the nail on your little finger, in fact. Wow, they're teeny-tiny, all right. How come they don't just get blown away? Their curly tail allows them to swing from branch to branch, a bit like a cheeky monkey. <laughs> and as they swing, they feed on tiny animals that float by. And how come they look so much like their home? Well, they're such home bodies that they have blended in perfectly. It would literally be like me turning into my home to the last detail. They even have the same lumps and bumps. I know. Taken out of the coral, they'd probably look like they had a bad case of chicken pox. But in the coral, they blend in perfectly. I can't really see the seahorse resemblance. They don't look that much like horses, do they? Well, they are seahorses, but to help them blend in even more to their coral home, they've lost their famous seahorse snout that you will still see on their relatives, the regular seahorses. Yeah, his snout's been chopped off, hasn't it? He looks more like a pig than a horse. And like their cousins, the seahorses, their mummy is a daddy. Are you horsing around? <laughs> <laughs> 
No, it's true. They're the only animal in the world where the male gets pregnant and has babies. Hold the phone. You mean this little fella is a mama? Yep, and you can see the little babies moving around. Look. So, technically not a common man in the fish world, but a very weird one in the human world. <laughs> oh, look, these two are playing a game. Well, I suppose you have to entertain yourself when you're stuck on a coral for life. So like the dressing up decorator crab, the pygmy seahorse is a brilliant mimic and can con anyone into thinking they were just looking at some pretty coral. What a fantastic ocean fakery. Time to catch up with our cunning con artists. How do you do? Yeah, I'm right, thanks. The ocean conners have got a few clever tricks up their sleeves, and what's more, they're all linked together. Puffer by name, puffed up by nature. Size lies with this crafty puffer fish. But if your size is set, then why not hang out in a big, whiskery posse like our catfish? For pure individuality, you can't beat the dressing up decorator crab, as he adds yet another bit of random weed to his outfit. Still, it fools his predators, so uh, who cares if he looks a bit daft? Unlike the pygmy seahorses, they look so similar to their surroundings, you can't even find them. Now that is coral mimicry to the extreme. So, who's up next? <laughs> And to the left, and to the right. OK, your turn. Spot the weed that is really swaying in the breeze and the fish that is pretending to sway in the breeze. Hmm, they're all pretty convincing. I'd say the one in the middle. Correct. Meet the ghost pipe fish. Ah, the name says it all. They look like pipes and they move like ghosts. They do look eerily like they're just hovering in thin air, like a ghost. But they have to move like that. I mean, what would be the point of looking so weed-like if they zoomed around the reef? Oh, talking of weed, <laughs> why did the puffer fish blush? Dunno. Because the seaweed... <laughs> it did a weed, you uh, see, did. Um, let's pretend that never happened. Back to the ghost pipe fish. OK. They're brilliant impersonators, and they're also related to seahorses, which explains their weird floaty moves. You're telling me. I mean, how do they do other stuff, though? Like feed, if they have to stay weed-like the whole time? Well, when they're upside down, they can view their food better, and they can suck it up while they're hanging around pretending to be seaweed. So another super smart impersonating con. If only we had that skill, things would be so much easier. Like the pygmy seahorse, the weedy ghost pipefish can impersonate their environment right down to their floaty moves. So the pygmy seahorse and ghost pipefish are linked because they're both great impersonators. <laughs> wow, it's a thin fish army. They do move like stormtroopers, don't they? Now a bit of formation dancing, and why not? And what's more, they're swimming upright. Which is why they look like puppets dangling from invisible string. And now you can hardly see them. Uh, what are we talking about here? Well, these are razorfish. Razor-like body, razor-like name. They are cool, I like them. But surely they're not con men. Ah, well, they certainly are. But they're quite cool con men. They have a few different con tricks up their sleeves, so they're quite chilled. Well, I guess a razor mouth is one of them. It helps, but they are masters of disguise. They can make themselves look super thin, almost invisible. Their long body and sharp spine allows them to hide in similar-looking animals, like the sea urchin. Oh, yeah. Where have they gone? And their vertical swimming style allows them to sneak up on their food in a weird, silent bobbing way. Oh, but look, though, they can swim normally. Oh, yeah, well, that's just another of their tricky ways. They can swim like normal fish, but they choose not to. If they swim head down, they can hide and ambush their prey. So why do anything else? Yeah, this upside-down thing's catching on. The ghost pipefish liked it, too. Exactly. So, like the ghost pipefish, the razorfish choose to hang out upside down, all in the name of disguise. <laughs> wow, oh, it's a bit breezy. I'm getting blown away. Oh, that was close. These flipping frog feet are useless. Luckily, I have a cunning plan. Most people call me the frogfish and tend to laugh at my unusual appearance and bad hair. 
But I'm also known in more inner circles as the anglerfish. I may look like a useless hairy object, but I have a little device that has fooled many and earned me my reputation as quite a trickster. Allow me to demonstrate. My inbuilt fishing rod. That's why I'm called the anglerfish. Get it now? On the end of my rod is this false worm. And you thought it was a real worm? Well, that's exactly what my victims fall for every time. What? <laughs> what a cunning plan from the anglerfish. And to think he looks so useless. He's awesome, all right. Surely the ultimate con master. Camouflage, an almost invisible fishing rod, false worm bait, and their big gulping gob. Foolproof, I'd say. And like our other con master, the razorfish, their stealthy hunting ability means their prey have no chance. So, crafty hunting links these two, and the sneaky anglerfish links right back to the stealthy stonefish, because they're both fishermen con artists. What a load of consters. I don't really think that's a word, but I know what you mean. Yeah. Let's take a look back over our shady scammers. <laughs> We started with the stonefish. He pretends to be a stone so he can snaffle his prey out of nowhere. Like the leafy batfish. <laughs> but for him, disguise is all about blending in to survive. I love the sneaky snake eel. He's not a poisonous snake at all, but pretends to be one so he can swim around unhassled. Which connects him to our trickster, the leather jacket, who mimics the venomous toby fish, knowing that it will prevent him from being gobbled up. Then there's the feisty Fang Lenny, who pretends to be kind and caring, but is actually anything but. Hey! <laughs> and you've got nothing to worry about if your false eyes confuse your predators into thinking you're a crab. Oops. The preposterous puffer fish who goes from cute fish to scary spiky fish in seconds. But if you don't have super blow-up powers, then ganging together can con predators into thinking you're one big animal not to be messed with, like our crazy catfish. I prefer the dressing up decorator crab. At least he uses recycled disguises to hide himself away. But for pure hidden talent, you can't beat the Diddy Pygmy seahorses. So identical to their surroundings, they look like a bit of coral, right down to their lumps and bumps. Like their relatives, the ghostly pipefish. With their amazing blending skills, they can feed on and impersonate seaweed at the same time. And speaking of upside down, the ridiculous razorfish swim head down so they can hide and sneak up on their food at the same time. <laughs> but none are more cunning than the ultimate con man. Angler by name, angler by nature. The anglerfish trick their victims into thinking it's dinner time before it's kaput. See, Barney, you were a rubbish con man compared to that lot. And uh, here's your homemade unique snorkel bat, by the way. Hey, that is handcrafted quality, that. OK, well, listen, I'm with you on the snorkel, but that mask, that is... That, OK, that's just... So what we'll do is we'll just take that up and you're good to go. Two pounds, come on, it's a good deal.